Good morning. Today's scripture is from Acts chapter 9, and um, I encourage you when you get a chance, please read verses 1 through 22. But here's two selected verses real quick. Verse 3, and uh, we'll read verse 4 as well. Is about Saul on the road to Damascus. Now, as he went on his way, he approached Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven shone around him, and falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And then later in chapter 9, we hear about Ananias, who receives a vision from God, and he responds, Here I am, Lord. And in verse 11, he receives this calling. The Lord said to him, Rise and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of, of Judas, look for the man of Tarsus named Saul, for behold, he is praying. And the Lord goes on to say, go to this place and lay hands on Saul and pray with him. He's expecting you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So I just want to share a few thoughts with you about calling. I think this is a crucial thing for Christians to understand, and I think there's a lot of confusion about call, the idea of being called by Christ. Many people think it's something that only happens to pastors and missionaries. Also, Christians have this assumption, especially when you read stories about Saul on the road to Damascus, that a calling needs to be a giant thing, something impressive that God assigns in an impressive way. But the reality is that these calls come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. Our Lord is creative, and he doesn't do things the same way for each person. So sometimes our call might be a real quiet voice just nudging us. Think about Abraham or Samuel. Both of them just simply heard a voice beckoning them to do something. We need to remember that calling has to do with Jesus asking us to participate in his ministry. And that ministry is huge. It's about restoring the love relationship between people and God. And we need to recognize that in our own lives, these calls may come in small doses or little steps over time doesn't necessarily mean we're going to get an overarching huge goal for our lives. Some people might, but we need to be responsive to those little short-term calls that Christ makes upon our lives as disciples. Maybe it's something as simple as helping the helpless. We know Jesus taught about that. He said, help those who can never repay you. And if it says it in Jesus' teaching, then you can be sure that it is a valid calling on your life. Now, I polled some people about what their calling from God has been, and you'll see from some of these examples, there's a wide variety. Uh, one person said to volunteer at a summer camp for special needs kids. Another was to aid a recovering addict to get into a house and be able to hook up her septic and electric and water, so getting, helping her get on her feet. Uh, another was to uh, deliver a diaper cake to unchurched parents or parents-to-be. I didn't know what a diaper cake was, but I found out that it's a cake-shaped collection of items for infants, including diapers and, and various other things, bo bottles, but made into a shape of a diaper cake. Kind of interesting. But the list goes on and on. There's all kinds of situations and varieties of ways in which our calling plays out in our lives. Sometimes it's in our job setting, sometimes within our family, and sometimes uh, within our neighborhoods. And I think it's true that uh, among the people listening to this video today, there's a variety of callings. Our Lord is creative, and he's got a special plan and purpose for each of us. So what do we learn about Saul? What do we learn about calling from Saul? Well, first of all, Saul is called to relationship with Christ. He had been running from relationship with Christ. Even though he had witnessed the, the martyr, Stephen, live out a Christ-like model by saying, Lord, forgive them. They know not what they do, as Saul and the mob stoned him to death. He was unmoved. 
it took a, a more, um, it took a bigger attention getter for Saul to turn around and, and recognize that Christ was beckoning him into relationship with him. But the bottom line is, we first are called to relationship with Christ. And once we embrace him as Lord and Savior, that begins um, our discipleship. And as disciples, we receive other callings along the way. We need to recognize with Saul that when Christ calls, he very often upends our assumptions, plans, and preferences. Man plans and God laughs. Saul was, was aiming to stomp out Christianity because he saw it as blasphemy. But when he met the resurrected Christ, realized that Christ is the Messiah, it completely shattered all his plans, but opened up a new path for his life, one that was in harmony with what God is doing. I ran into a guy the other day who uh, ran away from his calling. When he was a child, he saw his mother as a special ed teacher and decided, I'm never going to do that. That is too tough, too taxing. That's not for me. So he tried anything else other than being a teacher. He managed a blockbuster video store. He worked in a hospital. But eventually, he took a part-time job or a temporary job at a school and realized in that moment, that's where he should be. And now today, he's living out his calling as a special ed teacher. And I know especially that this is a calling for him because he told about how a parent called one day about a particular child and said, He's your problem from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Your problem, not mine. And this teacher took that as a mission to care especially for this child and to devote more time to him because he knew that the parent had a very bad attitude about that child. The Lord will upend our plans. If we're running from our calling, He'll eventually bring us around, and he'll use those things that um, were false starts to get us back on the right track. As disciples, we should also expect short-term calls, and we see this in the calling of Ananias. He was minding his own business, sitting at home, when he received a vision, and he perceived that the Lord was calling him, sort of like a doctor on call for an emergency. He realized that the Lord had an immediate need and called upon him. And he responded, here I am, Lord. And throughout our lives, we have these opportunities to respond to a short-term calling. Uh, just the other day, I received the calling to go pray for a friend of mine. He lives in Birmingham. It was a three-hour trip, one way. But I responded to that calling, and my friend was receptive, and I was able to pray over him and lay hands on him, and I sensed that the Lord was pleased. These kinds of things lead us in the way of Christ to enable us to do Christ's ministry in the world. There are times where we might deny a short-term call and learn a lesson from it. I did. I was felt a nudge to go visit a neighbor, a next door neighbor, but I didn't do it. The next thing I knew, he was moving away because he and his wife were getting divorced. To me, that was a lesson. I don't think I could have prevented their divorce, but there was some reason the Lord wanted me to go to him, and I denied that call. I learned a lesson to be more responsive and more swift in my response to the Lord. I have a friend, Tim, who received a call, a nudge, to write a letter to his brother who was incarcerated. He didn't really want to do it. He was doing other things that evening. It just kind of passed through his mind. He shoved it aside, but later he realized, I really ought to do this. So he wrote the letter, put it in the mail, and found out later that it arrived in his brother's cell on just the day he most needed uh, some kind of contact with the world. He was at his lowest and was feeling forgotten. But that letter arrived just in the nick of time. Ananias also shows us that we need to be prepared for a moment of crisis. Sometimes the Lord's going to ask us to do things that are out of our comfort zone, that seem illogical or dangerous. Here, Ananias was being asked to go to Saul, who was the most dangerous man as far as Christians were concerned. 
It was like sticking your head in a ravenous lion's jaws. But Ananias felt that nudge that he should go and lay hands on Saul. This is the reason I'm in seminary. The Lord nudged me to do something I really didn't want to do, and that was to uh, incur all the cost and to uh, deal with exams and reading lists and all these things to go to seminary. It's something I, for years, said I probably would never do because there were all these reasons not to. But I knew it was the voice of the Lord when I heard this sort of chant, go, 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 because I knew that wasn't my own voice. It was the voice of the Lord. Same with Ananias. He knew that wasn't his own voice saying, go talk to Saul. It was the last thing he wanted to do. But he recognized the Lord in that. The Lord will challenge us to do things that we had talked ourselves out of, that we decided were not, um, not our calling. Our call often involves us being a vessel or a conduit for carrying God's grace to another person. God doesn't need Ananias, he doesn't need you and me to extend his grace to someone else, but he called Ananias to go and lay hands on Saul. And it was a privilege to partner with God in what God was doing. Eventually, Saul would bring Christianity to the known world. But Ananias didn't know the outcome. He just simply obeyed, obeyed the Lord and played his part and uh, received a front row seat in witnessing what God was all about, seeing God's power at work. This reminds me of a, a story about Indian Springs Holiness Camp. They had a healing ceremony there at the camp, and both the pastor and the man who came up for healing for his injured leg, they really had skeptical doubts about whether or not a healing service could do any good. But they went, away, went ahead with the service, and the pastor prayed over him, and afterwards, the pastor said, well, do you feel any, diff any different? And he said, no. Well, he said, why don't you take that, that brace off and just see? Well, it turned out he had been healed. Both of them had doubts, but they obediently played their part in cooperating with God, and they received the Lord's power. So this should be a reminder to us that when there are needs around us, we shouldn't just simply tell people, I'll pray for you and then do it later or forget to do it. We should pray for them right there in that moment and see what the Lord might do. Lastly, I just need to emphasize that Ananias' call had nothing to do with church ministry. He wasn't on a platform preaching. He wasn't leading worship. He wasn't doing any of that. It was a behind-the-scenes calling to go and lay hands on Saul, and it resulted in us being here today this Sunday because Saul became the Apostle Paul and spread the church throughout the known world. Ananias had no way of knowing the impact of obeying but he did, and this really should be an encouragement to us. We may think we're helping a person at one moment in a particular situation, but in reality, we could be making a huge difference in the kingdom of God through the power of God participating in Jesus's ministry. Amen.